G'day everyone, I hope you're super well. These images are from my 2001 trip to Paris. This was one of the earliest times I was shooting with compact flash. And why are we talking about compact flash? Because today I want to talk about memory cards and specifically XQD. That's these little guys here, XQD. There's an XQD with a compact flash, which has been around the longest. And then there's an XQD with an SD card. So they're sort of similar in size. So I just want to quickly talk about is the XQD card for you? And should you be using it in your Nikons for still photography and film production? I want to talk a little bit about the history of XQD. So we first saw it in the Nikon D4, which I had. And at the time, Nikon, as a promotion, shipped the D4 with a uh, 16 megabyte, which was fine, because it was only a 16 uh, megapixel camera. So a 16 megabyte card and the card reader that went with it, which is good, because they're kind of expensive. So I use the XQD card. And you know, it was supposed to be the most modern, the best format and all that sort of stuff. And it actually stopped working within six months. And I'd pretty much almost never had any card fail. I might've had one card fail in the previous decade. And then this thing stopped working within six months. So that left a bad taste in my mouth for XQD. And because they were so expensive and because I could still put compact flashcards into my Nikon D4. I didn't worry about it, I forgot about it, and I moved on because I was using the D810s and they were compact flash and SD. But as we move forward, uh, Nikon have continued to embrace the XQD card. And of course, with the Nikon D850, we have finally seen the demise of compact flash and it is XQD and SD cards is all that you can use. So because of the speed, because of 4K video, because the files are 46 megapixels and the world just keeps getting bigger and faster, I decided to embrace XQD. So I would like to talk about XQD in this film. So it started in 2011, that camera came out in 2012 and uh, it's in the D500, the D5, the D850, the D4 and the D4S and Sony use it in some of its video cameras. When, when talking about whether you should be using this, I wanna talk about the two most common uh, card formats, Compact Flash and SD. Now these two have both been around a while. This has been around the longest. I was using this in a camera I bought in 2001. It was a 1.7 megapixel Kodak camera, which I took to me on one of my world trips uh, and took some very interesting photographs in Paris. That was the first time I used a compact flash and I think it was something like 96 megabytes. Something ridiculous like that. I think it came with a 16 megabyte car and it cost, you know, $300 or something to get a 96 megabyte compact flash card this size. So I know compact flash very well. I've been using it now almost two decades. It's a great format. It's, I reckon I've only ever had one of these fail in that whole time. And, but there is one massive fundamental flaw of the compact flash card, which perhaps everyone has suffered a problem with it at one point in time. And see these tiny little pins here. These, sorry, these are the little holes. And they go into pins which are in the camera and they are literally pin heads like the head of a needle. They're very thin and they're very fragile. I've had to replace compact flash card readers probably annually because one or two of those pins get bent. They're very fragile. And I've even had to replace one of the readers in a camera. I think it was in my, in my Nikon D3 because the pins got bent. So this is an old format. It's a reliable format, but it's a bit fragile. And this is why I love SD. So SD uses this style, so it's not um, male and female style thing, it's more just touch plates, and they just slide in and there's nothing that can be bent or broken or whatever. So I think SD was a, was a great improvement uh, on compact flash. 
And then XQD, it's got the same sort of touch plates, but they're actually, you can't even see them. They're, they're, they're hidden, they're hidden in there. So we've had iterations of improvement which have uh, made these things more reliable and less likely to being broken and thus errors. So we all know these two formats well, Compact Flash and uh, SD, fantastic, work well. Um, Compact Flash has reached sort of, or is reaching the limits of its speed and that's why XQDs come along. And SD is a great format, but it's the smallest of them all. And of course, there's micro SD, which, uh, here you go, there's a micro SD. Crazy. It's crazy to think you can store thousands of pictures or hours of video in these things. And they go up to, I think they go up to 320 megabytes or something ridiculous. Sorry, not megabytes, gigabytes, 320 gigabytes. It's something the size, literally the size, smaller than a nail. Smaller than a nail. Crazy. But... These two rather old formats, in digital photography terms, are reaching their ceilings for speed and capacity. The XQD, in its uh, version 2 format, can move one gigabyte, one gigabyte, not gigabit, one gigabyte, a thousand megabytes per second. Even so, this card, which is the latest that I've bought, is uh, a 440 read and a 400 write, 440 read, 400 write, the standard can basically do double this, bit over double this. So it's tremendously fast. That means I can, I can move about 20 images of uh, the D850 uh, per second, which is a lot, with the, with the, with the uh, one gigabyte per second version. And they're currently saying this can go up to two terabytes in this tiny little package here, two terabytes. So that is mind blowing. Another rather profound issue with the XQD is that it's quite rare. Take for example SD, where cars, cameras, camcorders, computers, TVs, the list goes on and on as to what SD cards can plug into. Our computers and our iMacs and our laptops, so many different brands of computers. Strangely, Apple just removed this. I can't see why, as it's the thinnest port on the machine. It's just Apple being Apple. But besides those recent edition laptops, all the Macs for the last few years you've been able to plug an SD card into, and it's really useful not to have to have a reader with you to plug into all these different places. Plus, in purchasing my XQ, XQ, XQD card reader, they're pretty hard to come by too, and they're expensive. So, not really a problem with the format per se, the speed is great, the robustness is great, the connectivity is great, all those things are great. But the fact that it's rare and expensive, if you have a failure, you're in a foreign place, there's no camera shops around, you know, you're not gonna be able to pick one of these things up in the general store, but SD card readers, they're pretty ubiquitous. You can find them in a lot of strange places. You can also find SD cards in a lot of strange places, to be honest, definitely where you couldn't find XQD cards. So. The fact that these things are rare and expensive and there's almost no peripherals that you can plug into, no, you know, there's, no, there's no TVs, there's no computers, there's no cars that have XQD slots, it does make it a lot harder to use. And I actually, uh, one day I was at work, I'd left my XQD card reader at home, I still hadn't bought two because the one that uh, came with my original Nikon failed, I bought a new one. Uh, so I need to buy two new ones, haven't done that yet, and uh, I tried to download the pictures directly from the camera. And there's something else weird going on there that I wasn't, like I used to be able to in the past, able to mount the camera like a hard drive and download the pictures. I thought it was very strange. I spent a couple of hours trying to solve it, downloading various different Nikon applications which were supposed to do it, and it didn't work. So do make sure if you're using XQD that you have the reader with you or you might not be able to access your pictures at all, and that would be a pain. So yeah, XQD, it's an interesting format. It'll be very interesting to see whether it, uh, it, it, it sort of gets the critical mass required to make these things work. Canon aren't using it, Sony aren't using it in their stills cameras. So of the three biggest players, in volume of course I'm talking there, only one of them is using it in their still cameras. So what should you do about it? If you're in a situation where 
lose card failure and then losing your images is just you, you simply just have to have two cards well if you've got a d850 you have to uh, you have to have xqd because you've got an sd slot and an xqd slot and if you want redundancy you have to have it no choice so your decision is made if you're in a situation where, you know, it's not the end of the world if uh, once every 10 years you lose a few pictures, because I reckon it might happen about that often. It's probably happened about that often for me. And can I say, even when the cards failed, the one I'm talking about, and I was actually in San Francisco in 2006, was able to recover the files with file recovery software. So I didn't even end up losing the files. Yeah, so if you're in a position where it's okay, you know, we know the cards are pretty solid and you just want to run with one card, should you get XQD? Should you get XQD? So it's faster. I do think it's a more robust format. Obviously it's gonna come in higher capacities, but they're gonna be really expensive. So this is my recommendation. So, so only really if you need to either be shooting high speed all the time, you're a sports photographer and that sort of thing, or, uh, and you know, you've got to do it in long bursts, because even, like I've done it, the SDs can handle bursts of 10 or 15, 20 frames, it's fine, it's absolutely fine. So unless you need to do lots and lots of long, high speed bursts, or you need redundancy, I see no point in getting the XQD at the moment. I do think the more people that use them and the more adoption that there is, they will come down in price. Now, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the future of memory cards. So June last year, June 2017, a company called Delkin uh, introduced the CF Express. Now that's something that I haven't heard about. Hadn't heard about CF Express. And what CF Express is, is the next iteration of uh, memory cards, which is being ratified by the Compact Flash Association. Uh, basically, this company, Delkin, which is an American company, have uh, made a card in the XQD format, even so it's got a different bus. The bus that it uses is uh, the PCIe 3.0 uh, bus. Version one of CF Express can push through just shy of two gigabytes or just shy of 2000 megabytes per second. So it's twice as fast as this card here. And there's a version two, which uh, is it's not announced, it's not released, but it's looking like it's going to be able to push through almost eight gigabytes a second. And again, we'll be in this format they're saying it'll be in the other formats as well, but none of those exist yet. The only one that exists is in the XQD format. Eight gigabytes a second, that's an insane amount of speed and storage. Can you imagine how quickly you'd fill these things up? Uh, I can see video requiring that sort of speed. I cannot see stills requiring that sort of speed anytime soon. Are there any client devices that can use the new uh, CF Express format in the XQD format? Well, I'm glad you asked. Allegedly, there was a rumor that uh, someone who worked for uh, Lexa said that um, as it's the same format as XQD, all the Nikons that use XQD would be able to use CF Express just with a small firmware update. So it's possible that uh, cameras with XQD will be able to go even faster than they go now onto this even faster uh, storage uh, format. I already think this format's amazing and I'm not really sure that I'm gonna hit the glass ceiling on this one anytime soon. And it really comes down to your shooting. If you just wanna go then sure, you can fill the buffer and you can fill the card and that's fine. But that's not real world most of the time. So I'd really love to know uh, anyone else that's used XQD. I've never talked to anybody else. I've never run into another photographer who's currently using XQD. So I would love to know your experiences and thoughts on XQD. And I'd love to know what format is your favorite. 
uh, what formats you've had problems with, with which format you think is the, uh, the most flaky. Is it uh, CF or SD or micro SD? Which ones have you had troubles with? I'd love to know all that stuff. So thank you so much for watching this little journey through memory cards and should you get XQD. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please like, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time and keep on clicking. Oh, and of course, check out my Instagram, Matt Irwin Photography. Check out my website, mattirwin.com. Have a look at what I do and have a look at what I do for other people in my commercial work. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.